said from the beginning, the party that gets rid of their 80-year-old candidate is the party that's going to win. I don't think Joe Biden's going to be the candidate. That was Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley, I know, because I interviewed her, uh, making part of her closing argument before voters head to the polls on Super Tuesday. So let's bring in our panel to discuss it. David Swerdlick, he is a senior staff writer, senior staff editor, my apologies, for The New York Times. David Drucker, he is a senior writer for The Dispatch and the author of In Trump's Shadow, The Battle for 2024. Christine Rosen, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and many other wonderful things. And Bob Cusack, he's the editor-in-chief at The Hill. And I'm so grateful to you guys for being here for our first show. And uh, we're just getting to know each other, but I've worked with you guys for years, and I just admire the heck out of you. So thank you for being Thanks, here. Chris. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me just, uh, Bob, I'm going to start with you. Um, Super Tuesday, Nikki Haley, is this, I, I don't want to be mean, but does it feel like there isn't, she, she had to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, I look at the map. It's a non-zero possibility that she gets shut out. I think we have some graphics somewhere um, that can show you. But when, when I went through with the amazing Caleb Parker and looked for uh, what the thresholds are in these states, you know, she could get totally shut out. She could, Chris. And I thought your interview was very good. And, and she says it's not gotten personal with Donald Trump. It's gotten personal. Totally. I'm, not, I'm not so sure she's going to endorse him. Maybe she wins Virginia. But, but she could get shut out, and then she's got to make some decisions because the third-party group, No Labels, is thinking about her. And oh. she's got to make a decision because I don't think she's going to be in this race much longer. Christine, I can't imagine that No Labels really wants to, to nominate a Nikki, uh, Nikki Haley, and we're going to hear a little bit more about this. Actually, is it possible that we can hear the Congressman, hear Congressman Buck right now? Because I think it's germane to Bob's point. If we can roll that right now, that would be really helpful. It's soon, but the, but the point being, um, the split in the Republican Party, Nikki Haley didn't change, right, on her policy. She's basically the same as she was when we met her as a Tea Party, tea party darling, when uh, Sarah Palin came in Worcester. to camp yeah. campaign for her. I don't imagine, Christine, that the no label squishy centrists would like the idea of nominating Nikki Haley, would they? Uh, not necessarily. And listening to her interview with you, it struck me that she's really trying to wave the flag for that last bit of traditional GOP uh, issue based mm -hmm. politics. Um, and she said over and over again, it's one man. The party's becoming one man. We don't want that. Actually, that is what the party wants now. So what she might do is perhaps take her issues to the convention. Remember, this is a GOP that did not even have a platform at their last presidential convention. And, and perhaps just try to, again, wave that flag one last time for the remain, main, remaining part of the GOP that hasn't completely lost its mind for Donald Trump. Because there's a lot of people out there who would vote for someone like her in a general, but they're not going to do it in the primary. Drucker, Drucker uh, we see every four years people say, we're, not, we're, we're never coming home. We're staying out. We're never going to vote for you. Most of the time they do. Uh, is this year any different? Well, and, and this you could say the same thing of both sides, right? Democrats who say we're not voting for Joe Biden because of Gaza. Republicans who say we'll never vote for Donald Trump. Do they come home? I don't think we know. And I think I think you're right. In any other election cycle, after a divisive primary, things get personal. People feel disappointed. And then they always threaten, and we've seen it in polling. I'm not voting for that guy or that lady in a general election. No way. And, of course, they always do. But they always do because over time they say to themselves, you know, I basically agree with the nominee. I didn't want them. But I basically agree with them on the big issues. And they're basically a good person. And I'm cool with that. And it's a binary choice. But what we have seen in the Republican Party, and this is what I think Nikki Haley represents, it's not about her. It's about this anywhere from 25 to 45 percent, this faction that keeps voting for her, even though they know she cannot win, even though they know she's not going to win. And they've told me this when I've interviewed them. We just want her to keep going because we're glad somebody is saying it. So are they going to vote for Donald Trump? not thinking he's a good guy and thinking on fiscal issues, on national security issues and some other issues, he really doesn't represent me. We don't know yet. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.